Welcome back to the shrine. Today we're gonna go and work on the next operation which is creating these reliefs on the side. So that will be the first operation we'll tackle. Uh, you can see this is the really first one that I worked on and it has a double relief cut. So this should be 30 degrees and on the first one I didn't set it up properly so I cut a 60 degree and then a 30 degree uh, this was done on a bridge port and now I'm going to use the uh, fryer CNC hopefully get better results so these two were done on the bridge port and you can see the reliefs on the drawing I have it marked as you can see it's a seven millimeter chamfer basically at 30 degrees um, which is this is not the most efficient way um, to dimension it because it's hard to measure so I'll probably switch to this dimension here as I mentioned in the previous video this could have been done with a cutter like so you know when when these reliefs these side reliefs were cut and then use a cutter and basically come in and cut it this way the problem is this cutter has a taper chink this is a Morse taper chink and um, I don't really have a good way uh, to hold this in the CNC learning from the previous operation when um, the tappet was held in a collet chuck only in a small area here and then you can see when the drill is acting here this thing is bowing down it's bending down in a collet chuck so I wanted to have a little bit more stiffer uh, work holding in this case so I came up with this little vise so the way it works is I can pop in a part like so and then there's a pin that is going to align the pre-drilled hole in the tappet with the hole in the vise and there's a certain amount of clearance and so this guy has a living hinge here so when I squeeze this in the vise this will not go anywhere <laughs> I tested and tried it and this is the thing it holds it like there is no tomorrow when it clamps on it there's no vibration nothing it just it just does the cutting so once this side is cut I can just pop it out turn it 180 put it back in align it with the pin and then just do the other cut little ingenious wise let's go and see some chips fly This little fixture worked out well. I made a matching pin. So this is a 833 hole and this is a 819 pin. 
and then these holes are 8.2 so it's got a nicer fit everything everything worked out nicely now I mentioned before that some of these tappets are not fully grown so that uh, the depth of the pocket is is not to print but um, you know I still want to um, move these through the machining process and uh, basically learn as much as I can learn with these rejects so some of these do have the the necessary depth you can see this one has kind of crowning uh, so this end is not cut to size yet so accordingly the size should be around 3.71 and look at that 368 so 374 on the other side um, so it's not uniform but it's fairly it's fairly close so I've got three more operations on this side that I can execute with one single setup the first one is to deck the end and also cut the internal bore the second one is to create the hemispherical socket and then the third one is to drill the oiling hole well the first one can be done with an end mill uh, decking it to this length and creating the socket the second one is creating this hemispherical pocket for the push rod and then the third one is to drill the oiling hole so all these can be done with one setup if my tool changer would work properly then I can just program all these in a consecutive manner so it would do the decking the hole and then the hemispherical socket and then finally the little oiling hole but my tool changer is not working what I'm going to do instead is create a serial operation where I'm just going to pop this in and then create one op and then just repeat it on a set of parts and then change the tool, change the program and then do the next step the next operation I originally designed to do on a lathe it was just more suiting for a lathe but then I have to do everything manually so since I have the CNC it can do the job for me and also hold the tolerances and the size my initial thought was that I'm gonna come in with the drill and I'm gonna spot drill it and then I come in with another drill and I'm gonna drill the hole to a certain depth the next operation would be to come in with an end mill and deck the length and also go in and create the bore, the cylindrical bore. So after I, I did a couple pieces that way I realized I can just plunge in the end mill. I can just go right in and basically deck it and then create the socket with this end mill. Now the problem is that this end mill doesn't have a radius at the end here. And my own drawing is calling for a one millimeter radius right here at the bottom so I went out shopping and I found this beauty she really is a thing of a beauty and she has a 30 thou radius at the edge which is 0.7 millimeter so that will be sufficient as you can see this is a six flute half an inch solid carbide end mill so hopefully that will do the job properly my initial idea was to use this tool here which can do drilling and milling operation but after doing some testing I wasn't really happy about the performance I think the main drawback of this tool is that it's designed with coolant and it's mine you can see the coolant holes here and here and so what that's supposed to do is evacuate the chips because this thing is not evacuating the chips and I think it's cutting and recutting and that's why the surface roughness wasn't to uh, my taste so let's go and change this tool out to this one 
and then let the hogging begin. All the parts are in and uh, some of these are forged too short again these were all rejects but on some of them uh, this top surface actually got machined and uh, there is no burst or really or really minimum amount of burst you can see the internal bore is beautiful now here's another one you can see the surface finish inside and out is absolutely beautiful now a couple measurements here, uh, the length, I need to measure the length from this bore and uh, so this length from the bore here to the top has to be 27,167 and that's uh, with a 0.328 pin which is at 2164 so that's what I have right here you can see the pin is inserted as such and I'm measuring across just like the print says so 2716 <laughs> don't have don't have the last digit but that's that's good enough uh, so this internal bore I know this is not accurate should be 16 millimeters you can see it's spot on and then the depth should be seven and a half and that is with these burrs. So I think that's pretty good. So these are kind of hard to chuck and remove it from the collet chuck. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to go and change the tools and basically just come in. The next operation is going to be cutting a chamfer here, getting rid of some of these tiny burrs with a countersink. So I'm essentially going to mill a chamfer on it with a 90 degree countersink. The next one is milling the socket with a 6 millimeter ball end mill. And then the last operation is drilling a hole with a 2 millimeter uh, drill. That is going to be interesting.
there you have it 11 parts or rejects <laughs> machined to uh, non-perfection I gotta tell you these are the most beautiful chamfers I ever milled both the internal and the external um, the hole, the oiling hole is nice in the center you can see from this side it also in the center so this is the push rod that's going to be used with the tappet I'm just gonna go and paint it and then we can do an imprint and you can see that it's got a nice uniform collar at the top and it's touching the bottom a little bit so I think that will work also this radius at the bottom came out really nice this size should be 27 16 you can see 27 11 uh, but there's also play here with this pin let's see with this pin it's a little larger in size so 27 26 there's one more important thing here to see if the position of the socket is in a proper position axially now radially I don't know it looks good to me <laughs> I don't really have a way to measure it unless I put a ball in it and then I clamp it and then I measure the ball from the edges uh, I, I, I don't know if it's in the right position it seems right but axially you know in this position is it in a proper position so it's it's awkward to measure it you can just measure it like so because then this is going to go into the hole and you see it's it's not really possible so what I come up with is I made a gauge and this little gauge is just the end of this push rod cut off and then I put it in a plastic uh, bushing basically that meets this diameter and so if I measure it across you can see it's you know reasonably close to the near round number so what we're gonna do here is zero that out and then I can pop it in here I can put in the pin and I already need four hands and so I can measure it across so it comes out at 1703 the print says it should be around 1715 so that's reasonably good so I did the measurement on a couple of parts and you can see that it's fairly close so 17.10 so that's 50 microns off so there's not only fixturing but measurement jigs and fixtures a lot of these needed for a quick measurement just to be able to measure it at all so overall uh, most of the dimensions came out real nice a lot of learning on my side especially using that collet chuck is not the best idea um, the next generation parts I think I will make a dedicated fixture um, to do all these operations um, something that will provide a lot better retention for the parts because I could see that in a collet fixture this can bend up and down when the feed rate is too high the end mill can grab on it and it will rotate in a collet fixture and also the collet fixture does not allow for much deviation in diameter now some of these uh, you know there's two maybe three tenths of millimeter 
um, difference in the diameter and with that I basically had to go and manually adjust the collet fixture so that when I apply the cam on the collet fixture when I lock it that it will hold it properly otherwise some of these can turn basically during the cutting process when the force when the cutting force is being applied to them so we got one more operation left and that's gonna be the highest pucker basically coming in and drilling a hole this way and it's a pretty pretty deep hole so I did not decide yet if I'm gonna do it from one side and then turn it over and do it from the other side because I worry that when the drill is gonna come into the center it can come in crooked like this relative to the center hole and then it can walk off well that is going to be a wrap for today I appreciate your time if you enjoyed the video please give me a thumbs up and if you have any questions please leave a comment see you on the next one bye